What would you do if you woke up married to a stranger? Playboy and wild rapper Kazir is always in the blogs for some kind of scandal. Never been the one to play by the rules, he loves to test his limits. What happens when one weekend in Vegas he pushes past those limits and wakes up next to a beautiful stranger? Now, Angel has had a rough past. Getting caught up with the wrong guy, her life was going downhill fast. All she wanted was to start over and leave the troubles from her ex in the past. What was supposed to be a weekend of fun in Vegas turned into something life-changing. Once news comes out about the marriage, Kazir's team thinks this is the change he needs to turn his image around. The only problem is, Kazir and Naeja are like oil and water. Now forced to coexist, the two must put on this persona to the public. Just when things seem like they're real, a bomb explodes, threatening to shake the couple's life as they know it even more. Are you ready to take a sip and get drunk in love? Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile. And the book for this week is called Drunk in Love by Tay Monet. Um, this was my first read of hers. I don't think I've ever read a book by her before, but I enjoyed it. It was really good. So let's get right into it. So Kazir Waters is a rapper who's in Vegas just to party for the weekend and clear his mind before getting back in the studio to work on his second album. He's partying with uh, his two best friends and you know, they're just having a good time. His friends have hooked up with twins, and the twins are looking at him, you know, like, is he going to join us? And usually, like, that's how the friends get down. Um, and, of course, everybody wants to get close to the rapper, but he's like, you know, not tonight. I'm not on that type of time. And on his way to the bathroom, he bumps into a young lady causing her to spill her drink. And so, you know, it causes some conversation between them because she's like, you know, excuse you. And his security guard, like, gets in front of her trying to calm her down. And she's like, uh, he should be the one saying sorry to me. He made me spill my drink. So he brings her back to his section where they get even more drunk and high, you know, because he's already lit. But, you know, they're drinking even more. And they go off to his hotel room to have sex. The next morning, when they wake up, it's to find out that they got married. Because she sees this big-ass ring on her finger, and he's getting calls from back home. Kazir is sick. He just knows that she drugged him, put something either in his weed or in his drink. And she's like, uh... You got me fucked up. And her name is Niasia. And she's like, you the one that invited me to your section. You know, you brought me up there. We had fun. I was just as drunk as you. I didn't ask for any of this. And um, he goes back into the bathroom, slamming the door. And she steals some money from his wallet. And she leaves. And paparazzi is waiting outside. And they follow her to her hotel because they got pictures of her but you know she's not famous so they don't really know who she is right now and she came to vegas to get away from her reality she's in the process of rebuilding her life she's just moved into a small apartment and a low-income building and she's currently unemployed so you know this trip is just to like clear her mind, have some fun before she has to go deal with the bullshit that is her life right now. So when Kazir gets back home, of course his team is upset because it's like he's known for doing outrageous and wild things and this does not help his image at all. And the way he's looking at it is he doesn't see why they're even worried when it's his life. It has nothing to do with them. But I'm like, that's not true because you as an artist on this record label, you represent the company and 
people are going to look at how they handle you or how it seems like the company just lets you do whatever and it's a bad look for the company and nobody's going to work with you either you know if you happen to get let go because it's like you ain't got no chill so it's like who wants to represent that and deal with that even if you are a good artist and bring in a lot of money nobody wants to deal with that bullshit all day or you know all the time so he gets a call from his mother asking, is it true if he's married? And he's like, no, who told you that? Where are you getting this information from? And he knows it's from his cousin, Iris, who, you know, every time something hits the internet about him, she on the phone with his mama telling him stuff. And he's like, man, stop listening to her nosy ass and tell her to mind her business. So his manager, Janae, Ask him for his wife's name and he has nothing he don't know her name he don't know nothing doesn't know anything about her so they can track her down and try to get this under control so basically it's like he's stuck married to this woman he don't know has no idea how to find her anything like that so it's been a month and Nyasia is throwing up and she discovers that she's pregnant with Kazir's baby. She reaches out to Kazir, who of course doesn't believe it, um, or doesn't believe that it's his baby. Not that he doesn't believe that she's not pregnant. Um, and so he makes her go to the doctor to confirm that she is pregnant and he still thinks that she planned all of it, like drugging him to marry him and sleep with him without protection just to receive some money from him. So his manager and like another part of his team, they sit down and talk and like, you know, he's thinking like this is a conversation to get the marriage annulled and so they can go their separate ways. But his manager is like, you know, we think you guys should stay married and this will help clean up your image a little bit. Of course, Nyasia will have to sign an NDA. She'll move into his house to make the relationship look real. And Nyasia, she's like, you know, that all sounds good for him. But what about me? And he's like, see, I knew it. it just further proves his point that she's in this for the money and it's like i could see how he could feel that way but it's also you know like she said if i stay married to you that cleans up your image it makes you look like a good guy but what about me like what do i get out of this but also it's like naija nobody they can suggest that you stay there but nobody is forcing you to stay there and it's just like you don't know him he doesn't know you either so you can't be too upset about how he's looking at you like you just here for the come up because if she's not particularly happy either <laughs> and so it's just like if you don't want this like why are you forcing this issue then you can definitely get an abortion or you know make other plans for the baby but don't be too upset with him if he's looking at you like girl what like why are you still here we need to cut ties and go our separate ways but she'll be receiving uh fifteen thousand dollars a month as well and they ask her if there's anything in her past that could reflect badly on kazir which is laughable but she hesit she looks hesitant but she says no she shakes her head no and says you know no nope, nothing at all and if I'd have been in that room, I'd have been like, nope, what's that look? What that mean? What is it? Spill it out now. Um, so Kazir takes her to his house and shows her to her room and basically leaves her on her own. And she's like, wait, you're just going to leave me here? And he's like, yeah. Like, you know, this is your room. You can go anywhere in the house, but to my room and not my studio like basically them the two places that's off limits you know you got your money you good right and he leaves and she's feeling lonely and she's feeling sad but like i already said y'all two don't know each other he doesn't really want this so it's like 
it's understandable about how he's trying to keep his distance because even if you're not that type of girl to try to paint a baby on somebody or you know he doesn't know that y'all don't know each other so there's no reason to look at him as if he's a bad guy because it's just like he doesn't know you so just take it with a grain of salt um and so it becomes known on a gossip blog there's a photo of her with her ring and they now have her name so the manager, Janae, texts her and tells her, you know, don't comment, don't say anything about it, just the cat's out of the bag, um, let it be what it is. But it kind of upsets their plan because Kazir had an upcoming interview where he was going to announce their marriage. So, of course, when it hits the blogs again, Kazir's mom calls and demands that he comes to see her. And when he does, she's on the phone with his dad. His dad is in prison. You know, he used to be running the streets, but he got out and went legit. But when he went legit, he still had beef from the streets. And the guy that he had beef with broke into their house. And the mom, which her name is Maggie, she was the only person home and was attacked. So, you know, of course, when the dad finds out that his wife was attacked, he goes and finds the guy and kills him. So he was caught and he was sentenced to 25 years with the possibility of parole after 15. He's already been in there for 10. Um, and, you know, Kazir has hired a, a new legal team to get his dad an appeal because the last lawyer tried twice and failed. And neither the dad nor the mom are getting their hopes up you know it's like it's been 10 years already they can stick it out for the last five if this doesn't work and then he can get paroled then because it's not like he's saying he didn't do it or um you know he's being framed he's like you know i got caught i did what i was supposed to do and you know there's nothing wrong with that um so he hangs up from talking to his dad and his mom immediately jumps on him like what type of situation are you in did this woman force you like basically the same thing he said like did she drug you she trying to have a come up and he's like he really don't know so there's nothing he could tell her and uh maggie tells him you know bring her over i want to meet her so bring her over to me and he's like you know when i have some time I will, whoop de whoop whatever. So when he goes home, he brings Niaja food, and she expresses how she's not comfortable with the newfound fame and comments about her, because it's like, it's a lot of people commenting on a situation and making judgment about her that don't know her. And she just has to sit back and let it happen, because it's like, she can't respond to these people, because... Even if you try to defend yourself, excuse me, there's trolls on the internet are people who have just already made up their mind about you in connection to another person that they also don't know but feel like they know better than they know you. So you just have to deal with it. And he tells her, well, you signed a contract and you got paid, so you better suck it up and uh, deal with it. So she tells him, I know you don't want me here, but there's no reason to be an asshole, which is true. But let me finish. Uh, I'm not the only reason why we're in this position. And he just walks away saying he got too much work to do. Um, but that's another thing. That's why I said she can't be mad at him because he's not too comfortable with her being there. He doesn't really want to do this with her. But... He also cannot treat her like trash because they are in this situation because, like she said, she is not the only reason why they're in this position. So although it may seem like they both don't want it, it's like we also have to deal with the consequences of our actions. I'm not aborting my baby to make you feel better. And we're both in this fake marriage to help your image because you are like a loose cannon so don't just you know uh what am i trying to say 
don't just shit on me trying to make it seem like I'm ruining your life when you had a hand in this as well. So Iris pops up at the house because like after she comes out the bathroom, Iris is just sitting on her bed and she's like, damn, who are you? You know, like what you doing in here? And she introduces herself and invites her to go out shopping. And so, excuse me, Iris's story is she moved in with Kazir and his parents when she was 10 years old because her parents went to jail for fraud and embezzlement embezzle embezzle talk about some motherfucking embezzle embezzle man bitch man, that will forever be funny so iris is now in law school to become a family court lawyer um so as they're all shopping they're having a good time together getting to know each other and you know after they come back uh, Niaja took her bags upstairs. She comes back downstairs to hear Iris on the phone with her aunt and says, oh, are you reporting your findings on me? And Iris, you know, she laughs knowing that she was busted. And she tells Niaja about when Kazir first got signed, he had a girlfriend. And at the time, his girlfriend propped up pregnant. And, you know, of course, he's thinking the baby is his. He was excited in the preparation for the baby, like all of that, only to find out that the baby wasn't his. Because the mama was like, oh, something in the milk ain't clean. Get a paternity test. And when he does, it proves that the baby isn't his. And so since then, a few women have tried to pin a baby on him that also was not his baby. So it's like, take it with a grain of salt that he does not trust you because you are not the first person to try to say that a baby is his even if you are telling the truth it's just like you gotta roll with the punches and so Naija also reveals a little bit of her story saying you know she comes from a great background two loving parents she had a nice house she had a good childhood it's just when she became a teenager she met the wrong boy and fell in with the wrong crowd so you know, she's just trying to pick up the pieces from that. So at the interview where Kazir was supposed to announce his marriage, the interviewer who is giving off like Wendy Williams vibes is saying, you know, I heard that this marriage is fake and that, you know, it's all a sham. And he says, you know, no our relationship is just low key it's not fake it's just on the low everybody doesn't need to know everything and she said so you telling me that you had a girlfriend this whole time for the past year with all the scandals that have been surrounding you and she was just sitting in the background not saying a word and i'm like that goes back to how he feels slighted when it's like you need this just as much as i do because your name is pretty much dirt out in public. Like, yeah, you a good rapper, but besides that, what else? You are wild as hell. And he claims, you know, no, nah, my wife just understands the type of man that I am. And it's just like, sir, what? And she once again mentions it being staged and fake, but he doesn't respond. He's like, you know, I don't know what to tell you. And after the cameras go off, he snap on her like, you know, you was just supposed to let me announce my marriage and, you know, just ask subtle questions, but not uh, just flat out accuse it being fake. And she's like, well, I'm just reporting on what I heard. And it's just like, you're talking to a gossiper. They're not going to be nice and cute about it. Like, if you wanted that, you should have went to a real journalist. But he storms off. He's like, man, before I beat your, not beat your ass for real, but it's like, you know, before I snap on you for real, let me leave. Uh, and Janae pulls him away and tells him that he needs to be worried about Niaja and being seen more with her so people can start to believe that it's real. It's like, you know, you claim it was low key, but now y'all, now that the cat is out of the bag, y'all need to be seen together more. Um, so he takes her out to dinner, but they don't really talk to each other. It's like they tried to have a conversation, but. He's on his phone, and then 
she gets on her phone and they eat food and then she gets sick as he's paying the bill and like goes to the restroom and he drops her off at home and goes to another woman's house to have sex with her um so iris comes to take naija out again and they go to her aunt's house um you know when naija says she's hungry she's like you know come on i'll take you somewhere that has like the best food in town and so of course naija is feeling set up like why would you bring me here and maggie don't make it no better because she automatically starts with oh so you the one who married my baby and got knocked up huh and he's just like damn how do you two nice to meet you uh and this is what i say about the elders y'all y'all think old age just grant y'all bullshit that's all it is just straight bullshit because how you coming at this girl like this it's like once again oh but before we go there so maggie asks her is like you know what are your intentions with my baby and do you see this baby that you're having as a come up so naija snap she's like because approached me that night she didn't force uh i mean sorry i didn't force him to do anything so you know there's that i didn't have sex with myself so it's like once again it's not just me your son is not an angel who got preyed upon by me he may have been preyed upon people in the past but not me and it was his team that suggested that they stay married so it would look good for him in the end so you know back the fuck up off me when it comes to your child like i get that that's your son nobody is taking that away from her and trying to look out for her son's best interest but you can do that and still show some goddamn respect <sighs> oh i was so mad like reading that i'm just like girl fuck your son your son is out here being a dog ass nigga so don't try to you see in this for a cup man fuck your son and she gets up to leave and iris comes after her but naija says unless you're about to take me back to my car i don't want to hear nothing else i'm not going back in that house i'm not talking to her no more and like i low-key don't appreciate you even bringing me here if you knew that's the type of shit she was gonna be on um so of course uh Maggie calls Kazir like, you know, I met your wife slash baby mama and tells them about the interaction. Like, oh, she called herself being hot with me. Like, why wouldn't she? Because you was rude as fuck to that girl for no reason. Um, So immediately he calls Iris and once again tells her, you know, you need to mind your fucking business. What I got going on in my relationship and my situation is not your business. Leave it alone. And she tells him that Naisha is lonely. If she's not, you know, over here at my house, she's at your house alone up in that room. You know, you need to be spending more time with her, having some more interaction with her, instead of just leaving her to herself and basically trying to act like she doesn't exist. And so he takes that into consideration and he takes her out with him, like, you know, come on, get dressed, ride out with me. And he takes her shopping. And, uh, she tells him about her boyfriend that she had at 18 saying, you know, I was trying to be his ride or die, prove that I was down for him and with him. And she would do, you know, petty theft crimes with him. And that's how she got a charge and she went to jail. So while they're in the car together, his dad calls and she speaks to him because he's like, you know, I heard your wife went off on my wife, so tell her to chill. And Kazir is like, you know, she right here, you can tell her yourself. And they, you know, introduce themselves over the phone. And she's like, you know, it was just a, a respect thing. I just had to get some things established. And Naya, oh, where was I going with that? Uh, Naya gets a text from a former friend trying to hang out and Niaja hits her with the I'm good love and joy and the girl gets offended um putting on well she texts her first saying you know don't forget we know the real you but it's like if before you saw me online 
like kind of fake blowing up being married to this man if you weren't trying to hang with me then don't hit me about the blue just like oh hey girl was thinking about you you know let's hang out you haven't been trying to hang out with me so don't try to hang out with me now like i see through you and you mad that i see through you so this girl goes straight to the internet tagging her and stuff like oh she thinks she uh better than us now you know she don't want to hang but we know what she really about you know don't get exposed and it's just like you such a clout chaser like who does that and it's furthermore showing your intentions because you just so quick to hop on the internet and try to bash her and she's breaking up this guy named damon and so janae calls her and like what are you doing and who is Damon? And I usually tells her and uh, Kazir not to worry about it. And like I said, the girl is just a clout chaser. Pay her no mind. So with the conversations that they're starting to have and hanging out together, Nyasia is starting to develop feelings for Kazir. And Kazir takes her back to his mama's house and it's real awkward at first like you know she's saying thank you and that's pretty much it but then once again hear her mama go like i'm not gonna apologize for looking out for my baby but you know we could just call it a truth and i guess that's acceptable i'm sorry but i would have left again because i'm just like you still not not acknowledging the fact that you were rude to me and that you basically like tried to play me even without knowing me. Because like I said, there's a way to do everything. And the way the mama did it was unacceptable. And so they basically just leave it at that. And when they get back home, Nyasia asks Kazir, how many women is he currently sleeping with? And he tells her, two, you and somebody else. So they're back to not speaking because she was real close to admitting to him that she was developing real feelings for him. So, and he's kind of stuck because he doesn't see what the problem is. Problem is. Because it's like, this relationship is not real technically to him. It's like, yeah, we married, but I was still doing me. I wasn't just not having sex because I was married to you. Um, so, Janae gets a call from Iris. 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 Um, that Nyasia has some bleeding and they rush her to the hospital. So Kazir gets there, like, you know, why wouldn't you call me and tell me about this? And she's like, you know, she didn't have, uh, Nyasia says, you know, y'all really don't have to be here. It's okay. I'm good on my own. So the doctor comes in saying, you know, she has some scarring on her uterus and the baby was pushing up against it causing inflammation and irritation and so it's been revealed that she had an abortion before and the doctor says well not necessarily an abortion it can also be caused by a miscarriage but um and uh he's actually like you know don't you think we should talk about this or you should have told me about this and now he's just like no it's really none of your business but as long as the baby's cool it's all good so later he comes and asks her to braid his hair because his barber who cuts his hair and as well braids his hair is out of town so as she's braiding his hair this is when they have a conversation about their previous relationships until her phone start blowing up and someone has leaked her pregnancy which is fucked up because at the hospital janae told the doctor like i'm gonna need y'all to sign some ndas around here and and the doctor is like my staff would never and you know we don't reveal people's information but it's like literally nobody knew but the people in their room and now the hospital and his team you know, like, they haven't been talking so far, so how is it that this information got out? So somebody from that hospital and your team did. Or how do people say, look at your team out here never and Like, girl, please. No, that wouldn't be right because they actually did Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, so after that, 
Karzina takes her to a party. Uh, well, Naija and Iris, you know, they was in the house and he's about to leave. And I was like, damn, you ain't gonna ask us if we want to go. And he like, nah, you know, is it safe for her? Like as she's pregnant. And I was like, man, if you don't want me to go, just say that. Don't try to use the pregnancy as a reason for you not inviting us to this party because you still want to do you. And you're like, man, come on then. I just say my ass right. I'm like, you know what? I'm good. I, I'm i never going where I'm not welcome. So if it's a problem for you to take me to this party, go ahead. Because I ain't even trying to stop your flow, baby boy. You are good. Just go right ahead. But they get to the party. And, you know, they off to the side. He drinking and smoking, having a good time. And the other girl that he was having sex with is there. And for a while, he hasn't been having sex with her. Like, after he saw how upset Naija was, he stopped having sex with her. But at this party, when he goes to the bathroom, the girl sneaks up behind him in the bathroom and sucks his dick and because he didn't have a condom they don't have sex so that was the only thing so Naisha she sees them like coming out the like he went into the guest house to go to the bathroom so she sees him come out because she had been looking for him and then like very soon after she sees the girl come out and she's suspecting that they did something but she doesn't say anything so she goes over to Kazir and they start dancing, having a good time. She's like, you know what? I ain't even going to worry about it. Until someone bumps into her and Kazir is like, you know, watch where you going. And it starts an argument between him and the guy. Because the guy gets disrespectful. Like, you know, he getting all mad, probably upset because I could take his bitch. And, you know, Kazir just goes off. They get into a fight. And... He was going to make them leave, but they like, you know, no, nah, we good. Ain't nothing going on. And he says, well, one more thing happened, y'all y'all leaving. So I forgot to mention that Naija, like her, her dream job is being a makeup artist and she wanted to start a YouTube channel and, you know, it's been popping off for her. She launched her first video on her birthday, which she didn't say anything to anybody about, except for Iris, who took her out and, like, helped her set up her page and launch it for her birthday. Later on, like, Kaiser, like, he bought her some stuff. He bought her a new car, because her old car had been acting up. And, you know, that's what had made her start developing more feelings, because it's like, not only are they talking, but he's buying her stuff. He's treating... Which is so sad that it's like a good thing, but now he's like actually treating her like a human being with some respect. And uh, she's getting more work as a makeup artist. And one day as she's leaving a job, she gets a text from her ex, Damon, telling her that she'll be seeing him soon. So he requests that she meet him in the park and he's blackmailing her for 500k saying you know if you don't want what i got in this safety deposit box to come out then you better give me my money now she doesn't tell anybody about it but pictures of them meeting online and apart together is posted as if she's cheating and this comes right around the time as Kazir is out performing at a festival. And so when he comes home, he's upset with her. He doesn't talk to her. And she's like, you know, can we discuss this? Like, can we talk about it? And they discussed it, discuss it and move past it because she tells him, like, you know, he asked to meet up with me, but it wasn't like we were friendly. I don't talk to that nigga. I don't want nothing to do with him. You know, so don't look at it as if it's anything. And he's like, okay, cool. They take a vacation to Greece where, you know, they have a great time. It's bringing them even closer together. But when they get back, 
a flash drive with a note attached to it is delivered to Kazir. And when he, you know, puts it into his computer and clicks on it, he sees that it's a video. It's a video of Niaja with powder on her nose and she's engaging in sexual acts with three different men. And, you know, he is disgusted. He grabs the note that was attached to the flash drive and calls it. And it's Damon now demanding the money from Kaiser or saying he's going to go to the blogs. And he's like, you know, why would I pay you? I'm not paying you nothing. And Damon tells him, well, whether you give me the money or not, I can sell it to the blogs and then they'll pay me for it. So regardless, I win. So it's just like, first of all, let's go back to her meeting him in the park. It's like, girl, you should have known, like the trifling shit that he did to you in the past, you should have known that this was a setup within itself with y'all being seen in public together. And then you're not saying anything to anybody and letting this get even worse than what it was. Because she knew way back when they asked her, is there anything from her past that could reflect badly on Kaiser, even though it's a laughable question because Kaiser makes himself look fucking bad. But you should have addressed it then. Because it's like, you got people with money now. They could have been trying to make this go away. But I get she didn't want to be seen in a certain light. Um, so, of course, he goes straight to Niaja accusing her of cons- oh, excuse me, conspiring with Damien to set him up. And he throws her out of the house. He's like, you know, get your shit, get what you came here with, and get the fuck out. How you and this ain't going to try to set me up? And, you know, now she's trying to plead her case, but... He's too upset. He don't want to hear. He's not trying to hear, which is, I don't know. It's a double-edged sword because I can get it too. I'm just like, bitch, because I already felt from the beginning, like, I've been, and he says he's been more fucked up, you know, like drunk and high than what he was that weekend in Vegas, and he ain't never popped up married before. So it's like, I already feel like you set me up in that regard. Now here's, like, this is a different angle of you trying to set me up. But it's like, also, she's pregnant. Why would you just kick that woman out like that? If you felt that strong, well, I take that back because that's his house. I was going to say, if you felt that strongly about it, let her stay there and you leave. But that's your house. So I can understand, like, I ain't going no fucking where you get out. But, um, so where, where are we? And so the truth is, David gave her a lace blunt. And later, you know, like, during that video, he put cocaine up her nose. So she didn't even know what was happening. Like, she didn't even know the events had happened until later he showed her the video. And he's been using that video to get her to do whatever he wants. Because at first he was threatening to show it to her parents. And after he went to jail... And, you know, she got with Kazir. Then he was using it to threaten her that way. Um, Kazir's dad is released from prison. You know, this lawyer finally did what was what he was supposed to do. Um, and Iris comes over in the middle of them all getting, like, reunited. And is fussing at Kazir about kicking Aisha out. Ooh, excuse me, and how she's been in a hotel this whole time. So his family gets involved and is like, you know, tell us what's going on. And he tells he tells them everything. And his daddy tells him, you need to think and not listen to a nigga who is trying to blackmail you. You've been spending time with this girl. You know her better than you know him. How the hell are you just going to take his word over what the hell she been telling you? And so when he actually thinks about it, he goes to Iris's house to talk, but Aisha doesn't want to talk to him. Um, oh, wait. Let's backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. Uh, when I say his family got involved, they had a cookout and Maggie invited Aisha over. And when Kazir saw her there, 
he's like, you know, why did y'all invite her? What is she doing here? And then that's when the daddy pulled him to the side and was like, you actually need to think about this. But, um, and then he tries to talk to her, but she doesn't want to talk. She's like, you know, I tried to explain this to you. You kicked me out as if you didn't give a fuck about me and you honestly believe that I would do that to you. So, no. Because it's giving, I forgot what show that was, where it's like, okay, I'm giving you a chance to explain. And it's like, I don't want to anymore. When I tried to explain, you didn't want to listen. So basically, whatever you think about me, it's true. Just just go with that. Whatever you feel, cool. Um, but he tells her that she doesn't have to worry about her ex. And a couple days later, Damon is found dead. So the same girl from before who was trying to kick it and doing all that on social media once again calls her screaming saying that she had Damon killed. And when Naisha tells her, girl, get the fuck off my phone with this bullshit, she goes to social media and her saying, you know, I know you had him killed. You had your husband kill him, you know, just going off. And Naisha, she passes out because it's like, Lord, this is too much. And once again, she's rushed to the hospital. Um... And Kaiser shows up and tells her that Janae is taking care of it and she doesn't have to worry. And he wants her to come home, you know, after she's released from the hospital. But she goes back to Iris's house. She's like, you know, I no longer trust you. And she tells him, you know, when this contract is over, we can get a divorce and we can just co-parent. Because I'm not trying to take your baby from you. But we no longer have to stay married after this. And so, um, Kazir puts together a family dinner where he invites her parents hoping for it to be one big old happy reunion, but it doesn't go well. Her dad is still upset about her basically defying him after all these years, and her mom kind of just goes along with whatever the dad says so she's very quiet about it so she tells them to leave and tells him you know please leave that alone don't ever try that again he's like you know i'm sorry i thought that you would be happy to see them because you know this whole time she hasn't had anybody it's her by herself because she basically lost the relationship with her parents and then the shit that happened with damon so she's just been out here alone so he thought that they would finally come together. But that relationship is never going to be a good one. And so <clears throat> at his album release party, to make it up to Niaja, because, you know, he loves her. He wants to be with her. He's not trying to get a divorce. He wants her and he wants their baby together. So he apologizes publicly and proposes to her again, even though they are married. He's like, for real this time, you know. Um, and even though, like, people don't know about the Damon situation publicly and what went on, but it's just like, I embarrass you in private, private, excuse me, but I'm going to apologize publicly. So now they're in love, and they're going to be together until the casket drops. And I thought this was a really good read, because it's just like, to accidentally get married is so fucking crazy but to decide to stay married and keep a baby because it's like could you imagine i would never i'm sorry it would just have to be chalked up to and as much as r.i.p to kanye what was that last night was mad real sunglasses and avid i would chalk that up to a crazy ass weekend and that baby is not staying, and I'm not staying in this marriage. Uh, and I don't, I don't think I would have kept that from uh, from them. Like, as soon as the team acts, I'm like, uh, I'm being blackmailed by my ex boyfriend. And <clears throat> excuse me, because when she finally did tell, uh, I forgot to mention that when she finally did tell uh, Kazir. She's like, you know, it's it's not just a sex tape. I was raped. That is a video of assault. I didn't I wasn't in my right mind. I didn't even know that that video existed until 
uh, he started blackmailing me and he's been blackmailing me. Like that's, and I get it because it's like the video is not something she wants to be reminded of or to even know that it's out there and she feels ashamed. But I feel like there's nothing to be ashamed about. If anything, I would have used it like, yeah, I need help pressing charges against him and the fact that he has evidence of what he did to me. Oh, excuse me. Not my nose acting up, child. Um, and I wonder, like, she never got into, like, how after that video she got clean or didn't do drugs again. Because it's just, like, for him to lace not only the blunt and then later on in the video you have powder on your nose. Was that just a one-time thing? Or were you, like, an addict for a little while? I would have loved to go into that, like, just, just a little bit deeper. <clears throat> And then, like, the dad, I feel like, I because lo- I love court shows and, like, court scenes, I would have loved to see that a little bit, too. Like, the judge saying, you know, this has been a grave injustice and you never should have been in here. You know, you're free to go. And I wonder, I've got to look, like I said, this is my first uh, story by Tamone. I wonder if there's a, a story about Iris, because I would love to go more into her story. Like, how the hell your parents, both of your parents gone for embezz- embezzle, bitch. Uh, like, both of her parents gone and living with her aunt and uncle and her cousin. And then, like, how her going into family court, like, what does that do for her? Because I understand her passion behind it, but it's like, is that really something that you should go into for a career? Because it's like, I feel like you trying to correct your own trauma by trying to fix other people's so it's just something to think about anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and i hope to see you back next week peace and blessings my beautiful people